the Nissan Frontier has been joked about being the oldest new vehicle on the market. This is the first new generation since we were in fourth grade, and it enters into a pretty hot and competitive market. So let's see if the new Frontier has what it takes. Now, it was all the way back in 2004 that we had the last all new generation Nissan Frontier and I was 10 years old. And now, 18 years later, we're gonna see if this new third generation Frontier is modern enough, refined enough, and capable enough to compete with benchmarks like the Tacoma, the Ranger, and the Colorado. We'll start where we always do, on the road, talking about what's underneath the skin. I'll take you through a lot of the daily livability aspects of this truck, but then we're going to meet up with Paulo at Road America's off-road course and test this thing's off-road credentials, because after all, this is the Pro 4X. Now, under the hood we have a 3.8 liter naturally aspirated V6 engine, and it's a VQ series engine, so it's been tried and true, but back in 2020, it was re-engineered. It's like 93% new from that year, so this truck is new, this engine is kind of new, but it's not like it's incredibly modern. Again, we have a naturally aspirated V6 engine. It's not turbocharged and it makes 310 horsepower and 281 pound-feet of torque, which are incredibly strong numbers for this segment, but it does so without the added complexity of turbocharging or hybridization. And that gives something that buyers crave above all else, and that's reliability. Now in terms of performance, this 3.8 liter V6, like I said, makes 310 horsepower and 281 pound-feet of torque, which are, I believe, segment leading figures, but it's not like it's a supercar. Zero to 60 is done in about 7.5 seconds. Where you, where you lack things like low down turbocharged torque, you make up for those things in reliability, like I said. Which is of course what you want when you're towing up to 6,700 pounds. Then I guess while we're talking about truck stuff, yes, that's the max towing and payload maxes out at just about 1,600 pounds. And you can get a six foot bed with a king cab or in the Pro 4X like we have here, you can only get a crew cab with a five foot bed. And in the bed, you can get tie downs and rails and a 120 volt outlet. Oh, and the tow mode is the only specific and dedicated drive mode that there is. This thing is not about frills or fancy gimmicks. It's a simple old school truck, so it's not like Nissan strained themselves on the redesign for this thing, but that's kind of by design. The people that are in this segment aren't looking for incredible horsepower figures or zero to 60. This isn't like a Raptor segment. The people don't want the added complexity and complication of a turbocharger or a hybridized system. They want an appliance that is going to be there, ready for them, turn on in the morning, do anything that they ask of it, turn off at night, and be ready to do the same thing the next day. And I don't say any of this to suggest that Nissan half-assed this project. This truck is very good. They spent a huge amount of time on the livability component, the refinement component, and the 3.8 liter V6 likes to rev freely all the way up to about 7,000 RPM. The nine-speed automatic transmission is a Mercedes-derived design and built by Jatco, and it's very, very good. You don't feel shifts at all. The steering is a hydraulic unit, which feels heavy and it feels substantial, and you get a sense of quality behind the wheel that you just don't get in other trucks. The cabin is quiet and isolated. It's very refined in here. And I have absolutely no problem telling you that I feel so much less claustrophobic in this cabin than I did in the Tacoma. It's not to say that it's a lot more spacious, but for whatever reason, the outward visibility, the side visibility, the way that these seats hug you, it just feels more comfortable. The floor doesn't seem like it's right up under your butt, thrusting your knees into the steering wheel. The ride is so much better on this thing, and I think that's really where Nissan spent a lot of time, and it's paid off. And with that being said, this is the Pro 4X, which means it's the most off-road capable version, and that means it's got Bilstein shocks. I've never met a Bilstein shock that I liked. However, 
this is the best riding mid-size truck I've ever been in. At the end of the day then, the Frontier is refreshingly nice to live with from day to day. It's modern feeling enough on the surface, and you have tried and true mechanicals underneath the skin that you can trust. And with 19 MPG combined, it strikes a decent balance of modernity, capability, comfort, and utility. Now, let's meet up with Paulo. Three, two, one. All right. Nissan Frontier Pro 4X. What do you think? I think it looks really good. Yeah, I'm a fan. I think As I sink three inches into the ground. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's melted and frozen enough times over here where it's kind of kind of suspect. This is probably the best mid-sized truck on the market in terms of looks, at least, in my opinion. Yeah, I, Especially I think with this color. Yeah, I think it's up there. I really do like this forest green color that they got going on here. It looks fantastic. I really like the Toyota version of this color too, but this looks really good. Yeah. And of yeah. course, it just looks mean from the front face. You've got this blacked out grill with Frontier on the front and a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So we have the, the Pro 4X. Um, so some of the exterior features that that comes with are the red tow hooks down there that you can see the recovery points. Yep. And then um, you also have these LED uh, daytime running lights and also LED headlights. Yeah, and these look good. I saw them in the mirror on the way up here. And even on the inside, this is kind of an interesting detail. So like on the inside, you can only see it from profile, but you've got these three ambers uh, on the inside of your headlamp, which yeah. is kind of interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of cool. And then around the side, you have the, uh, with the with the Pro 4X, you have the fender flares, which aren't really that flared. Flares. Uh, you have the Bilstein shocks. By the way, best Bilsteins on a truck I've ever experienced. Yeah, Matt is a huge fan of how this thing rides. I but, really like them. But we'll get into that. They're good. Um, I guess the one thing I would say, these are all-terrain tires, but I'd probably recommend getting like some KO2s or... Yeah. Or yeah, I would totally agree. And generally the first thing that any like off-road or overlander does swap out tires. tires now, some, yeah. some vehicles will come with like a KO2 or like a Wild Peak, but these hand cooks, they got to go. But they are very good on the road. They're very quiet. They're very smooth. Yeah. And you can feel a lot through the steering rack. We'll see how it, how it handles the course. And then um, we, this also has the Pro Premium package, which one of the uh, features of that package are these fake beadlock or simulation beadlock. <laughs> Don't get you started on fake beadlock. Okay, <laughs> fake beadlock. Um, they look great though. They're wheels. like kind of TRD Pro inspired looking. Yeah, they look 17 good. 17 inch. They yeah. look good. They're yeah. okay. And then um, we, if you continue down the side, so you can, so far they have like, I think 80 and counting accessories that you can um, hook onto this when you when you make your purchase. And one of them is the rock rails. Yeah. <laughs> which we both don't like. Yeah, let's talk about this. Don't like. yeah. Let's talk about this. So Pro 4X gets 9.8 inches of clearance in the back. 9.5 in the front and then when you slap these let's call them predator steps rock rails whatever you want to call them it like drops the clearance down by like two three inches so yeah. you've kind of done away with the the benefit so i would leave those or or just get low profile ones yeah i don't know i would those. just not get these but yeah. i would get the chase rack in the back because this thing looks badass yeah so that's another looks accessory really cool. that you can get and then of course you've got your Pro 4X sticker on your bed, and then you've got LED tail lights. I like you've how got, Frontier stamped in here. Yeah, it's all stamped in. Kinda we like, like the that. Tundra. It's got your you know, Nissan red accented badge back here. Uh, you do have a step for your bed in the you back here, which is here. awesome. No, this one oh, is like the, one. the the pop down one. Yeah. So this will be kind of like you know an, an added accessory like we talked about. But so this Pro 4X only comes in crew cab, which means you can only get a five foot bed. Um, all crew cabs, except for, I think there's one long wheelbase, comes with just a five foot bed. Uh, the alternative would be a king cab, so like half door, uh, and that comes with a six foot bed. But it's freezing, so let's head inside. All right, it's comfy in here. Yeah, it's comfortable, it's spacious. Um, really nice. I really like the materials, and yeah, I it's think good. It's a good place to be. I know when we talked to Nissan, they spent a lot of time on the ride refinement and making it comfortable and livable. And they did that also with the interior. This is a lot quieter than I was expecting. It's a lot more comfortable. The seats are very good. The heated seats. Yeah, they are. Wow. You can literally boil water. They are on high. It is insane how it warm is they get. It is hot fast. And it's exactly what I want today. Yeah. Uh, heated steering wheel is fantastic. This is what I like. So all of the stuff, like a lot of cars have these features, but this is done really, really well. Like the heated steering wheel, it's heated the entire way yeah, around. The whole thing. Not just like at 10 and two, like a lot of cars are. Uh, the wireless charging pad, 
I it's have right not where you need it. Any, it's right where you need it, but I've never gotten my phone to actually work with a wireless charging pad. It works perfectly here every single time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this is also a good time to mention um, my big water bottle. I've complained about this in a lot of videos. It never fits in cup holders. This is one of the first cars that we've had like the second, as a yeah. press car. Yes, that's actually fit this and it fits in the door bin. Now, with that being said, in my personal car and every other press car, I still need my water bottle. So we have these cup holder extenders from 7 Sparta. They're the same company that gave me my Raptor lights for my 4Runner. So Fantastic cool. feature, they've yeah. got this thing. Um, it's like really nice molded plastic. Everything is rubberized so it doesn't rattle. Uh, it comes with like a cutout so you can have a mug for like with a handle. It's got a rubberized coaster in here. It fits right in here in your cup holder. You can spin it so it actually bites in there so you can grab your water bottle out. Mm -hmm. uh, it's super, super nice. Yeah, it fits my analogy am, too. It's like really inexpensive. It's like not even 25 bucks on Amazon. So link down in the description for 15% off. But this is a very comfortable, comfortable truck. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, it's, it's like, the tech, like you have wireless, it's, it, no, sorry, it's wired, wired. Apple CarPlay, CarPlay. Yep, yep. Android Auto, which is, which is still pretty good. You yeah. have um, your eight, well, this is a nine inch infotainment screen. Yeah, there so is an eight. eight or a nine. This is the upgraded one. And I think the colors on this look like they're really good. The, yeah. the, the blacks are nice and dark. And now the camera's not very good, but yeah, the, the, the actual <laughs> graphics are good. Yeah, the graphics are good. The cameras <laughs> that they use are a little out, terrible. outdated, especially yes. the reverse one. Like this side angle one is okay and the yeah. front one is okay, but. Yeah, so we're in off-road mode. So when you go into four low, it automatically pops up the camera. And I'm sure you'll talk about that when you do the off-road course. Yep, yeah, exactly. But yeah, wow, the camera's, they, they need some work. Yeah, um, you've got a semi-digital cluster, which is nice. Uh, you have some driver assist feature, so you have adaptive cruise and you have uh, blind spot monitor, but you don't have the pro pilot assist, so it won't keep you in your lane. Correct. Um, which is a little bit of a bummer. Yeah. Not the end of the world because this isn't a super expensive truck, but it is a bit of a bummer. Do you have a sunroof? These seats, like I said, not only are they super comfortable, but they have like this hexagon pattern. Yeah, I like that. Stitched in, which is very Lamborghini of them. <laughs> <laughs> the back seats, yeah, pretty they're small, but they're not bad. It's better than the King Cab. Yeah, I mean, we, we can fit back I there. I could fit, yes, yeah. I could fit back there. I wouldn't want to drive like over two hours, but I could fit. Have back. a nice little cutout for your head so you do have some nice headroom there. Yep, even under the seats, you have additional storage. More storage. Uh, yep. And then behind the seat backs, you actually have like your jack and stuff. The rear win or window is manual. You don't have like a motorized option up mm -hmm. here like you would in the Tacoma, the Tacoma, but to be honest, it's not really an issue for me. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really nice in here. You've got some charging, you've got a bunch of storage. It's just very comfortable and livable. In yeah. Here. I was actually thinking like, I really like how you actually have a lever to change gears versus yes. like a, a in dial. Like Fords, you have some of the dials and yeah. yeah. Like I, I can appreciate. This is one of the cheaper looking gear selectors, but it is, it I, feels I very like mechanical. Yeah. And that kind of goes to, along with a lot of stuff with this truck. It feels old school. It feels analog. It feels mechanical. You feel like you're really tied to it. And I think that's really nice. Yeah. Definitely. So with that, should we send it down the course? Let's do it. for letting us use their little off-road course again. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, this course, you know, it's not gonna push this truck to its braking point, but it's gonna allow us to kind of demonstrate some of the features um, that come with it, similar to how we did in the Bronco video. One thing that we have to get out of the way right away is that this is not a TRD Pro competitor. Yes, this is the most off-road ready frontier you can get from the factory, but it actually competes closest with the TRD Off-Road Tacoma. Maybe in the future we'll get something like a Frontier Nismo 4X, but with that out of the way, let's head into the forest and see what this thing can do. All right, so we're starting here, and you know, one of the benefits of, of a mid-sized truck is the size compared to like a Raptor or a TRD. Um, it's obviously a lot smaller, so it can maneuver around corners and, and tight articulation areas a little bit better than a full-size truck. Um, so one of the, the things that I really like though about the Bronco that we had last week is that it would actually lock up that rear wheel to allow me to make this corner. So let's see how this corner is going to go. Right now I'm in four low, uh, which pulls up the automatic P 
camera view right here that I have. So I have a front facing and then it gives me either side, the right or the left. Um, I'm in, yeah, four low. I don't think I, my diff isn't locked yet. I don't think I'll need it, but let's see if I can do this corner in one shot. It is kind of nice that you have these cameras because it kind of eliminates the need for you to need a spotter. But I can tell that I will not be able to make that in one go. Which is fine. Okay. Yeah, these cameras actually are pretty nice. So right now, I got a front facing and then a right front tire view. With the smaller size in this forested section, the snow is really the hardest obstacle to deal with. But with the four low on and the rear diff locked, traction wasn't an issue. In October, we took a Ram TRX through this exact same wooded course, but obviously it's a lot easier in this frontier. Um, yeah, so I'm in four high, and I have the rear diff locker on. Yeah, we do. Yeah, a little bit of juice, juice heading up to this one. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it would have been nice. The nice thing is the camera in four low. So I'm probably gonna try, I'm probably gonna put it into four low again and utilize the camera because it's just nice to see where your tires are going when you can't see over the mound. And then I'm also gonna try the hill descent when we get to the top of this and see how that does. So four low, I got my cameras up now. A little bit of juice, cameras disappeared. Nice, okay. Alright, kill the sun. Yeah, working well. Yeah, that was pretty smooth. But uh, probably a good time, yeah, to mention since I actually just scraped a little bit on that. Uh, approach is 32.3, breakover is 19.6, departure is 23. Uh, and that's just because it's, that's such a low number because it's the, the uh, bed overhang there. So ground clearance is um, 9.5. All right, here we go. Easy, easy. Kill the sense. speed at about three miles an hour breaking down breaking down the whole way nice. yeah I mean I feel like you can kind of do that yourself again that's kind of how I feel with some of those features for off-roading it's like you kind of just do it yourself. this wasn't really a challenge for the frontier but I could see if this was a harder course why you would want some of those different modes available that the Bronco has and the Tacoma, such as the GOAT or the Multi-Terrain Select. The next little challenge we got here is the Mo Moguls. So this is going to focus on suspension, articulation, uh, you know, the truck's ability to send power to the wheel with traction. Um, so I'm in, again, I'm in four low. I got the, the rear diff locked on and Let's see how we do. Now again, as we mentioned, we have the Bilstein dampers, um, which are, you know, obviously tuned for off-roading. So should allow for some more travel than your conventional shock. And yeah, we sent, we, we put the Bronco through this and we had some nice flex. So I'm curious to see. <laughs> the rock rails, don't get them. Or at least just get low profile ones. I don't know why you need these big ones. You don't. Why does it come with a step? That's the most pointless thing I've ever seen on this.
is actually dumb. All right, there it is, ladies and gentlemen. The Nissan Frontier. The third generation Nissan Frontier. At the end of the day, as it stands currently, the only truck in this segment that we would take over this is the Toyota Tacoma. The Frontier brings everything that Tacoma brings, but if you're into off-roading, the Tacoma has a few more options. However, if you're not into off-roading and you just need a nice, refined, reliable truck, then the Frontier isn't a bad way to go. These things start at about 28,000, but we've really enjoyed this forest green Pro 4X, which will set you back just over 37.3, which is about $200 less than a comparable TRD off-road Tacoma with the V6 and 4x4. Special thanks to Road America for letting us once again use their off-road course, Blenders for supplying the eyewear, and Melon for the lids. We hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see you again next time.